Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to a special interview episode of the Cultured Nerd Podcast. Today we're talking with Pandy O, uh, indie, mega cre- uh, indie manga creator, uh, one half of Moonlayer Studios, getting to talk about all of the wonderful projects he has and all the irons he has in his fire. Strap in, everybody, and get ready to talk anime. Hit it, Taylor! And here we are. And I'm on this uh, side of the card today. <laughs> thank, you, uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule. If you were not talking with us, hopefully you would be drawing because you have yeah. a million drawings to do. But uh, thank you That's for being true. here. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys so much for having me. Um, it's so... Anime and manga have become such a universally renowned thing it's so much yeah. bigger than just japan and i'm mm-hmm. and as i see the work that you're doing you wear your influences on your sleeve what yeah. were some of the animes that really hit home with you when you were younger yeah oh my goodness big old big old list <laughs> um well um i'm just kind of off the bat I mean, I think it was kind of everybody's childhood. Um, Dragon Ball Z was a big influence um, for me. Um, I actually, <laughs> I actually learned how to do like anatomy from from Dragon Ball Z when I was younger, just because like you know the muscles, like they just clicked. You know, like you know you had the shoulder piece up here, and then you had the bicep and stuff. Um, and I and just, they wear a yeah. lot of really <laughs> skin tight clothing. Like Vegeta is always in like very tight yeah. clothes. Yeah, yeah. And he's like he's like. Yeah. Kakarot, let's go fight. And you're like, okay. Yeah. I'll tell you. Yeah. And, and 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 even with like just the ripping of clothes, like, you know, some people would just leave the, you know, um pants, you know, unripped and untattered. But Dragon Ball Z actually showed like the legs and stuff like that. And and you know, that was something that really helped me to draw like, you know, um anatomy when I was in like, you know, the fifth grade and stuff like that. So uh but yeah, Dragon Ball Z was definitely a big um influence on me. Um and then the other ones um were like um I grew up watching Rama One Half, uh, uh, Tenchi, um, Outlaw Star, um, all those like really big like tsunami. I mean, Rama was. Um, um, I actually had to go to uh, the rental store <laughs> to get Rama One Half, um, which it's it, it's so funny. Me and my uh, me and my good friend, we we talk about that all the time. Just how like nothing was really regulated. <laughs> Like, you know, so we, you know, we saw things in, in, you know, uh, you know, video rental stores and we're like, oh, what's this? And we get it home and we're like, hmm. (laughs) Michael and I, we talked about this on another show that um, because of the, the, the unregulated nature of anime in the Mm nineties and early two thousands, we all saw Ninja Scroll at the age of 10 and it was all not what we should have seen at the age of 10. (laughs) <laughs> I tell that story all the time to people. I'm like, my I, people. People ask me my first one. I tell them, unfortunately, it was Ninja Scroll. Like, um, <laughs> but but it it really like it, it was very it was very exciting. It was it was scary. It, it was it was just a, a a range of just exciting emotions. It, it 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 was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, you know, I mean the the elongated neck and face and how how they moved it was mesmerizing but oh my goodness it it was brutal so um and i used to draw you know jubei like all the time i i couldn't watch the the anime after i, I watched it the first time but i would draw you know jubei like nobody's business because i thought the design and the style was so cool so so that was my that was my gateway to anime you talked about tenchi and Taylor yes. was a huge <laughs> Tenchi fan. Oh, Tenchi Muyo. Nice. It's interesting, though, yep. because it mm-hmm. the show has so many incarnations of it. And yes. that mm-hmm. one's a little bit more comedy, one's a little bit more mm-hmm. action-y. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. One's very much more sci-fi than the others. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Would yeah. you ever do something with that with your characters? That you yeah. have yeah. this, like, the Go-Go Ganzi... Uh, Mm-hmm. There are so many wonderful influences there, and I want to talk about that world a little yeah. bit more. So we'll come back to that. Yeah, absolutely. but would yeah. you? You could very easily 
just do slice of life of them living in that small town and oh, yeah. <laughs> that relationship and doing different yeah. tasks. Like that yeah. could be a whole manga, but that's not what you yeah. give us. You give us yeah. a world much bigger. Um, mm, but yeah. would you ever do that with your characters? Take them in, take the exact yeah. same characters, but put them in a much different mm -hmm. genre. Yeah, no, 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 absolutely. Um, and we actually have a plan for, for kind of a, um, kind of a, a crossover type of thing, but, but, uh, but even kind of like putting our characters in, um, kind of those, those like slice of life situations. Like, yeah, like I, I, like I grew up with that kind of stuff. I loved when, when, you know, when, uh, franchises kind of did that just because it, it, it was, it was fun. It was something, it was something new, you know, you got to see, you know, the insight to things that you're like, oh man, that's so, you know, that's, that's fun. That's the only thing that I can think of. I'm like, oh, this is really, really cool. So I love, I love those little specials and stuff. Well, and it's interesting that you mentioned Ranma. I can now see the Ranma influence. Um, yeah, yeah. Funny enough though, you have that real great homage to Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask. And the one, yeah, and the yeah. one pretty, and I was like, okay, we're showing some stuff yeah. there. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. Uh, one of the things that um, we live in an era where people are so hungry for this content. In fact, hungrier than your little fingers can work. Um, yeah. We had mentioned One Piece, which is mm -hmm. expansive. Um, yeah. I recently. Um, read all of berserk um mm. and am so floored by how amazing it is but to know mm. that the creator died uh mm. and that whatever we see is the end of it it will be an uh, homage to him but unfortunately mm. it ain't him um yeah mm -hmm. we were talking about dragon ball uh, sadly enough akira toriyama hopefully left enough yeah. secrets of like, mm -hmm. this is where it needs to go. Why mm -hmm. I bring all this up is, how do you as the creator, you obviously know bits and pieces of where the next segments are going to go. Do you mm -hmm. have that it's an entirety? Do you think, do you know how much time you want to put in? How do you think about these things? Because yeah. um, your styles are also wildly different and are such expansive yeah. universes on their own. Yeah. What constraints do you give yourself? How do you stay within your lane to not allow it to go to? I mean, maybe it will go 5,000 issues. Who knows? But yeah. tell me yeah. a little bit more yeah. about your uh, creative process and putting, giving yourself constraints on those things. Yeah, no, 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 absolutely. So, um, so I think, I think about that a lot just because I was, I was a huge fan. Um, I'm obviously of Dragon Ball Z and Akira Toriyama and that, that really kind of like, yeah, I, I think it shook a lot of people up. Um, definitely Berserk, you know, um, you know, hearing about him passing first shook a lot of people up just because like, you know, you have a lot of creators out there that are trying to you know, um, either work on their own stories and 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 do things to completion, and and that's something that really kind of motivates me to to kind of put the pedal to the metal um, for a lot of these things because I you know I do want there to be a, um, um, an ending to them, um, and I think I think that is kind of the restraint of like when I'm writing these stories, I'm I'm kind of telling myself like you know like like be be honest with yourself like how you know how long do you really want this and can you kind of tie it up and i always tell myself if if the people want more like let's say doganzi ends aka yumi ends all these things if people are like yo when are we getting like a second season or whatever and stuff like that hopefully i can you know with the success of of all these you know stories you know i can i can get the help to to expand on it uh, but like I, I look at the the work of Akira Toriyama. Um, I have I have um, um, his like compilation book, and one thing that I admire is just like just how just how much or how many stories that he had. You know, um, his his sort of library of work for me is something that I I, I feel I kind of chase. I'm like I want a I, you know I want a a big a, a big body of work. You know, so if something does happen, they can kind of see you know multiple sides of me. Um, and and kind of experience, yeah, just experience multiple, yeah, multiple sides of of you know my story. So so yeah, so I hope that I hope that, that answered the question. Well, you so. you're I I think that your uh, multifacetity 
shows mm -hmm. in the work. Yeah. You know, as yeah. I'm going through the uh uh the compilation book, what is the wonderful mm -hmm. the V yeah. V series? V series, yeah, absolutely. Yep, V series. Yeah. So we start with something with uh AK Yumi, which yeah. the art style of that one really jumped out at me, something like solo leveling, just the mm. way that like I can. I mean, you're doing the storyboards for the cartoon, the anime. As yeah, I'm watching yeah. this, I can just see that movement. Um, yeah. You only mm -hmm. tease a little bit here in mm -hmm. what is this larger world? What is this men in black mm -hmm. world that we're going to see? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but that's kind of uh, uh, the, uh, a, a more modern art style where then. Mm -hmm. In Blue Thunder, we're looking at more of a Dasher really blue. clean mm -hmm. Dasher Blue. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we're seeing a much more Gundam mm -hmm. kind of 70s and 80s. There's a Macross yeah. feel to this. Um, and I got some Giver vibes as well. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah definitely. Is it, is it, is that style, that older style? Is it difficult mm -hmm. because it is presented very clean? Mm -hmm. You know, you're not mm -hmm. seeing artist flair, <laughs> which I feel that yeah. anime has embraced today. I feel like mm -hmm. we're seeing more artistry. Go and watch any of the Luffy fights against Kaido. They are mm -hmm. spectacles mm -hmm. for the eye, right? Yeah, um, yeah. absolutely. Is it is it harder to draw in that older kind of 80s style? Yeah, um, believe it or not, um, no, because I, 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 I kind of grew up with that. Like I, I, I practice, um, like again, drawing Ninja Scroll. Um, and an, another one that I really fell in love with was was kind of, um, you know, Robotech or Macross um, style. We actually, my, uh, my dad was a huge fan of that, and um, we had VHS tapes of of Robotech. And I remember, um, I would I would draw um, the cover, and I forgot. I forgot the episode, but it was, uh, or the name of the episode, or the name of the tape, but um, it was one with Max Sterling um, and um, where he was meeting the Zentradi um, woman. I forgot her name. Hey, listen, or... hey, you don't need to apologize. Yeah. People don't understand. You would see yeah. anime on tapes and you wouldn't it's, know yeah. where it came from. It would just be yeah. a black thing. And then sometimes yeah. I remember things that feel like mm -hmm. a fever dream. I don't know yes. if they actually existed or not because I just yeah. saw it. There's there was a couple of shows. Horror anime like that. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Michael and I, uh, he texted me a few months ago and he's like, what was that one anime that your uncle gave us on tape? And I spent like a week to find it. It was called MD Geist. And that was the one. Oh, we were like, oh my God. A, that was it. And then there was the, right the, there. the horror Taylor. one. He described Taylor. What was that horror one we got? It was Twilight of the yeah. Dark Master. I was not another one. one. Yeah. Mega Man X4 yeah. Ultimate Armor is the MD, mm. MK Geist Armor. I Thank looked you. at them back oh, to wow. back and I was like, oh my oh, gosh. Interesting. That's interesting. that armor. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> No, no. I actually, MD Geist was another one that we rented from from like Blockbuster, and we were like, "Oh, it was looks a cool. movie. We like, it was so good." <laughs> <laughs> and and you know what? I, I honestly like it, it, those those that type of story definitely kind of it, it like inspires me, and I, I I I love that kind of stuff. Like it's so it's so gritty. It's so and it's and it's simple. It's it's it, it's simple yet very sort of complex. You know, in just the telling of it and stuff, but um, but 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 just going back to the question, it's very easy for me to kind of do that because again, I, I grew up. Um, um, that was kind of my reality. That was my, that was my, you know, that was my anime. Like you know, um, and I didn't know that some of these things were 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 not made in like the '90s. Like you know, they were made in like the '70s, the '80s. Um, wow. so, um, that was the style that I would draw anime in, and you know. Um, I didn't have any sort of like how to draw anime books and stuff like that. You know, it wasn't really, you know, a, a big, um, it wasn't like going online now and typing in like, you know, you know, anime and all this stuff comes up, you know, you, you had to kind of go out and, you know, find it, you know, um, and yeah. So um, that style, um, it, it's kind of funny. 
because when I try to draw kind of modern stuff, people were like, oh, I love that sort of retro feel. And I was like, man, like I was trying to go for a little bit more, more modern feel. But um, so, so it's definitely become more of my, my default kind of style is that, is that more sort of retro feel and stuff. Cause I love it. Like, honestly, it's, it's nice. I love it. <laughs> I, I actually love that retro feel because to me, I felt like some of the, like Michael and all the audience can attest to this. I'm a huge Gundam fan. Like I love the whole mm -hmm. franchise, but some of my absolute favorite Gundam stories were some mm -hmm. of the older ones from the eighties, like Stardust Memory mm -hmm. to me has one of the mm -hmm. best uh, animation teams that was behind it. Yeah. I felt mm -hmm. like the detail that they put into that work, everything was that very mid eighties where it was like, everything was yeah. polished and hyper complex yeah. and just gorgeous. Yeah. And then you gorgeous. see that show and then you compare it to Gundam Seed and you're like, it's not the same at it's all. It's not the same. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, and 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 the and the you know the work ethic and and ever since like you know, you know, doing this, you know, kind of full time and professional. I mean, I've always been drawing manga um, ever since I was younger, but but doing it professionally, like, you know, I I really tip my hat off to, you know, all the amazing artists that that work on every show just because like, you know. The, the the people that were doing those shows back in the day, those were all like hand painted cells. Like, I mean, just incredible work. Um, but so so through that, they were like, how can we do something where, or, or how, how can we make this job a little bit easier for people? Let's bring in computers. Let's let's try to like, you know, um, um, do the digital coloring. Let's try CGI and stuff like that. Because I mean, it's a lost art. It, it, it really is like, it is such like, it is such a lost art to 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 do that um and, and and i think that's part of what kind of motivates me is like you know it's a lost art that i'm hoping to kind of keep keep alive it's, if not only in the style um because um you know hand drawing again hats off i tried it once i i i did some hand drawing animation um, um when i was much younger and uh it is no joke it is mm. it is really a labor of love and it's something that you have to you really have to envision the end goal of what you're doing because <laughs> because it is it is a long road ahead of you <laughs> so uh then we go to our third book our <clears throat> go go our go go gone now one of the things that I'm super excited about is that when when I when you're a dumb when you're a kid and you read these things, you yeah. don't know how to say anything. So please yeah. correct me as I say your character's yeah. names wrong. Yeah, no, I mean, no problem. <laughs> I, you know, I, I feel like we're the generation that didn't know how to say Hermione until we heard that British guy said it, and everybody yeah. has a different pronunciation of it. Yeah. Well, so, um, actually, um, I'm so sorry. Side note, but we're also from the generation of like I I I like. It's kind of it's kind of old and cheesy, but me and my friend we joke about it all the time. Where you like it's kind of like you know you made it when like people mispronounce like the name yeah. because remember, sure. remember the, yeah the, the, on the old dubbing you know this was you know this was sort of being brought over. So um, I'm trying to remember it was a, it was a cura where they were like the cura had like, it wrong the first time yeah, and then they fixed yeah, it the second like, dubbing yeah and, and everyone I mean, was like what. I don't <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, it's like Canada or something like that. So, um, but no. So, so I um um I will definitely if it's something like you know like the the wrong character, I'll definitely let you know. But uh, but the pronunciations, like I find it I find it fascinating if, if people like take a stab at it, they get it wrong, or like or sometimes they get it right. Sometimes I'm like, oh, check you out. <laughs> so well, we enter this world, uh, kind of backwards in where mm -hmm. as the story goes we find out unfortunately this is actually a respite from what our characters usually are going through and that yeah. whatever mm -hmm. that responsibility is is going to be dragging mm -hmm. them back uh yeah. mm -hmm. it's so funny because when you open up when you have no idea about something i kept mm -hmm. playing with like what is the tone of this you have that mm -hmm. great cover image but you see the mm -hmm. sword with it with the mm -hmm. eyes on it so is it like a go bot yeah. you know what is it a metabot yeah, like yeah. okay so i don't yeah, know yeah. where we are gonna go with this yeah as i'm now reflecting on it mm -hmm. i feel that there is a magic to the world you have not defined yet, but it almost mm -hmm. feels like a full metal alchemist. 
um, oh. that there's a larger order when the other when our, our in the third act of the book when some characters bring our characters away. Um, yeah, but you just touch on this weapon system. Okay, mm -hmm. and it's funny yeah. that Taylor even had it there, and you don't really explain yeah. it, but you talk yeah. about it. We have our mm -hmm. soul essence revelation, right? Yeah. Now, yep. mm -hmm. in, now with this character, we see mm -hmm. him with a a, a normal <laughs> object, right? Not yeah. the mm -hmm. intended object. He does yeah. his soul reverence revelation, of which then the yeah. weapon comes. But there you go. <laughs> the individuals attacking them, the Burakumai, Buraku, Burakumi? Um, um, Burumkai, yeah. Burumkai. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he says, oh, that's not the actual, that's not as strong as its real weapon because it's mm -hmm. being channeled through that. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about what is this, <laughs> this, this system? Do you consider, yeah. is this magic or is this something else? Mm -hmm. So no, I mean it's definitely it's definitely a a a magic, um, and it, and it's kind of a it's kind of a mystery that that that's going to be kind of um, um explained um just um I mean there's already kind of a mystery there about about what are Sheen and I's and 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 like you know how they came to be and so so the magic system that they're going to be using is going to be kind of revealed kind of slowly because there's a there's definitely kind of a centerpiece um, to all this but um but the the idea of of like you know um the person's you know soul essence isn't as strong to to um, um not strong enough to manifest itself or itself by itself they have to kind of channel it through something um i thought would be kind of an interesting you know something interesting to to kind of explore with that so so yeah and it means that any object right a broom handle mm -hmm. a mop yeah these could then mm -hmm. also be okay yeah but yeah and when you're introduced to our main character um mm -hmm. his weapon which mm -hmm. is sentient of some kind now yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> if could is this the intended um is this the intended form of the weapon to create mm -hmm. a more perfect form that this entity mm -hmm. along with this system creates the mm -hmm. object that is intended for the magic yeah so so his so his weapon and again i'll i'll, I'll kind of dance around some things because <laughs> we're Thank still you. kind of building it out yeah no 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 it's so his um his weapon is more of a of a pure form of, of something to kind of combat whatever is happening with the shin and i whatever like whatever mystery is sort of creating these these beings that that uh, you know that can do this thing um, um in the story um the broom kai actually have like you know um like some sort of like little energy ball that they put in there um and that's going to be touched upon as well just because there's a lot of I, I i like playing around with the with the nuance of like you know what is you know what is what is good and what is evil and 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 is there is there a piece of evil that needs to go into good to, you know, so like, it, well, it, yeah. Funny enough, that idea <laughs> plays in our, yeah. um, our main character is Obasi. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Great. Uh, now Obasi looks like wonderful protagonist <laughs> of any show and jump. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But his <laughs> companion yeah. Looks like a straight up hunter hunter <laughs> murder man. And it was yeah. so funny when you showed me your shirt earlier because yeah. that yeah. individual is great at cooking. This ain't about cooking. And he yeah, yeah, is, yeah. we have <laughs> we have barely scratched the surface of what he can yeah. do. Which yeah, absolutely. I, which I love. We've only yeah. barely done that. Um <laughs> and so many other shows, we go through something and then go to their sanctuary place mm -hmm. you've already yeah. set that up now we're gonna go yeah. away from it um yeah. will there be other individuals that also have weapons in the perfect form that also have personalities um yes um um there's probably just gonna be three um i um um and yeah i'll just say yes yeah <laughs> Yeah. wonderful yeah, cuz uh, yeah so then they are then these are rare objects in the world then these are yes. uh -huh. okay um, yeah but then the technique of is then is this then part of myself my soul manifesting into a weapon mm -hmm. 
so um it for for abasi no no not for not for abasi um and not for those kind of perfect things because again you know the mystery is like you know what are these shin and eyes like and 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 how they come to be and like how are they able to kind of do these things and that's kind of the mystery of of you know of mm -hmm. Golganzi. um so yeah yeah and, and then and, uh, and there'll and, definitely be some oh i'm sorry right <laughs> no i was gonna say that's the same fight that we find out don't bring a bomb to a knife fight right and that's where yeah, yeah. Is that where that <laughs> yeah. happens okay wonderful yeah, yeah. <laughs> um i was very uh yeah i was pleasantly surprised by the pacing um you show a lot mm, yeah. of constraint and very conservative mm. i don't think you give away your world at all i think that there is a as a hunger and then i was also just very happy yeah. to have so much of it you know as i'm reading yeah. as i'm reading <laughs> dasher blue it's like oh great well yeah. i want to see right this happens in three books i need to see the conclusion yeah. of this i don't get that conclusion yeah, absolutely but for yeah. here <laughs> We did get mm -hmm. to move along and get to see that mm -hmm. kind of call to adventure that's going to bring them back. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Really fun world. Love that idea yeah. of if I was running around the that's backyard, true. I would absolutely want to yeah. soul reveal my different <laughs> weapons. Um, so excited yeah. to hear more about yeah. all of that. Um, absolutely. How uh, from here, mm -hmm. uh, do our characters, do we go back to the organization that they left beforehand or where that they were training from? And then yeah. I'm assuming that is going to lead into whatever this conflict is. There's a bigger mm -hmm. conflict that they've kind of yeah. moved away from. Is this war yeah. been going on for a long time or is this a new war? Yeah, no, no, it's been going on for a very long time. And and like um, what I hinted at was was right now the the you know one side has kind of has has kind of overtaken the other side and stuff like that you know now that you know there's 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 rebels there's people kind of fleeing you know um and so we're going to actually go back and kind of discuss some things or 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 being called i mean that's i mean in in, in the uh, part where some of the Burumkai um, officers come and, and gather up um, Orbasi, or at least, you know, lets him know um, that his service is required. And that's kind of the the um, the big mystery of like, you know, well, who is Obasi? Like, you know, what is this, you know, you know, what is this call to action? Um, and we get to see um, um, in, in the next part kind of going forward, like I want to start revealing kind of the, the overall kind of bigger, my bigger kingdom, the controlling kingdom. Um, um, um of this world so so yeah we have some yeah we definitely have some plans um and and, and i'm glad you said re re restraint just because like you know um e you know i feel like a lot of a lot of artists a lot of storytellers like they have all these like really grand ideas um and you just want to put them out um, but you also want to make sure that you're kind of like you know fine tuning them and kind of sharpening them just to make sure that you know a they're 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 fun and they're they're really good ideas, but also that they kind of go somewhere. Um, and for Go Ganzi, it's 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 turning into one of our just you know more like me and my wife we talk about it all the time. We'll be like you know well what do you think about this? Like you know like here are the stepping points that we want to hit. Like you know how can we get from point A to point B and make sure that it's entertaining. It's not a lot of info dumping, which you know is is very is very hard to to not do because sometimes you just want to explain it but i know for me i'm like no let me just show it or let me just you know touch a touch on it just a little bit you didn't do info yeah. dumpy in anything you just mm -hmm. enough yeah. to know like yeah. i'm thinking of i think of ak again where it's yeah. like she fights aliens her dad talks to her yeah. there's other aliens yeah. there's a known organism yeah. right she's yeah. doing something he did this for a long time and has some yeah. sort of information about it yeah um yeah but we don't know anything i loved mm -hmm. her little bat charm have you made that in real life yet are you selling that there was so no many i need to <laughs> there were so many things in all of this i was like oh i want that i would like yeah. The sword. Have you made the yeah. sword? You know what I mean, like all of that I, yeah. type of stuff. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, um, and and all of these things. And again, I always say, like, this stuff is so fun. I mean, this was my childhood. Like, you know, seeing stuff and and dreaming of a day where if I could create these worlds and these characters, um, because I would love to see, you know, a Dasher Blue figure, um, 
I would love to have, you know, an AK Yumi, um, one of those bat um, charms, the sword, like AK Yumi figure. So yeah, no, uh, and 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 we're we're making sure that we build up these, and and, and actually, just kind of go back a little bit. Th that was one of our kind of pillars of making Moon Lair. Like everything starts with a story. Like we start off with the with the manga. Um, that way, people can get invested, and then they know where these characters are from. And then we do any sort of like you know merchandise, games, um, figures, you know anything like that. Because like we know that you know, you know, if we know what these characters stand for, then we'll be more inclined to be like, oh man, I need to get that. Like I, you know, so. So in uh, Dasher Blue's name, when we see it, mm -hmm. it has a little American yeah. flag symbol in there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> is there an All Might vibe to him, or is he part of uh, U.S. military services in the future? Is the suit of his mm. own, or is it something mm. that uh, issue he has to access him. to? Correct. <laughs> yeah. Is he uh, is he an Iron Man, or is he more yeah. of an Edge of Tomorrow guy? No, um, actually, that's a that's a really good um, um, kind of. Um, uh, kind of explanation um i would say more of an an, an an iron man um there's definitely a little bit more of a of a of a mystical vibe behind the power of the suit um, um yeah so um and and as part as the part about like just the the military thing he kind of operates kind of through on his own but actually kind of comes through like a long lineage of dasher blues and stuff like that so he's kind of like you know the 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 guy of today and stuff you know he's had you know he's had a predecessor and the character that actually she's not going to be in this in issue in issue two like um you're going to um, get introduced to a character that that may or may not be <laughs> um you know a dasher in in training and stuff uh, so my question then is for each of these lineages of dasher are they all wearing the same Persona and like people just think this like Dasher Blue is immortal, kind of like the Phantom, mm -hmm. or is it yeah. like? Oh how is yeah, that so so um they all have kind of different styles of suits. Um, I remember when I did the first one, I wanted to kind of it to go for a more sort of seventies type of like um um a very seventies in inspired like Tokusatsu. Yes. Um, but but when I was designing, you know, um, um, the suit for for Trace, I was like, you know, I definitely want him to have a little bit more of a modern feel um, to it. Um, and then from from there, I was like, you know what, it'd be it'd be kind of cool if we can, yeah, just have kind of the the lineage of it. Um, what and also, and again, I don't know, I don't know how much am I giving away, but um, you know, there's there's kind of um, parallel kind of universes of like different dashers and different dasher forces and stuff so do you need to apologize is there a suit from the 30s that's clearly racist <laughs> but like we won't talk about it because no, we no. understand it's it was from 1932 it was a much different time yeah no 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 it, it, it it's mainly like you know um you know um over you know over promising like i said you know, we're a very small studio. So like, I'm like, oh, I got these plans to do this. And my wife is like, we need to finish this. <laughs> sure. yeah. um, does the Dasher blue suit do everything? Or like Batman, he's got a car, he's got a jet, he's got a satellite. Um, he's he's talking to an AI, correct? There's a, there was, there's a, an analytics that's helping him determine things, correct? Um, he, he definitely has, um, I mean, he definitely has um, some sort of um, um, computerized sort of like um, um, analyzing thing, um, but also he's talking to a character um, up in the lair, um, okay. which I'm going to be, yeah, which I'm going to be uh, debuting um, um, in issue two. So, yeah. So he has a man in the chair. All right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. Then, and then I would have, you touched on monsters. Um, mm -hmm. Are there... Uh, do we see any Power Ranger fights? Is there a version of the suit that's 30 stories tall? Yeah, so um, no, but there is <laughs> there is going to be a um, I'm, 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 I'm looking down at, at my copy, so I'm, yeah, I'm looking at it. Um, no, um, so there is going to be a giant mech. There is going right. to be a giant mech um, called King Guard. We are, we are so excited for it. Um, like I, yeah, I'm super excited for it. So yeah. Um, um and then, uh, you you've presented all of this, and then you've presented us with the age old question in your yeah. author short, of yeah. 
how do I balance my time? How do I work on the things that speak to me? And how do I not just draw hot anime ladies? What yeah. is your hot anime lady? Is it once a week? Do you have to give yourself permission? How does that work? Because the market is yeah. there for that, but that's not that's the kind true. of stories you want to tell. That's true. No, so um, um, so as far as like just you know, you know, making sure that we're we're telling stories that that we want to do. Again, my my motivation is just time. I'm like I'm like man, like you know, I if I if I chill for like a day, I'm like you lost the day. Like you, you know, yeah. like come on, man, you gotta you gotta get going. Um, and then I, I mean, I'm just I like I like create creating. Like I find I find you know safety and kind of control in that. Like there's you know I mean life is unpredictable. It's it's chaotic. So in creating, like it's it's something that that I find kind of you know solace in that. Um, but as far as as far as drawing, um, I mean, I definitely draw kind of um, things that I I you know that will probably never have a story, just to kind of like either get it out my system. I do like a lot of animation practices and stuff like that. Um, so um, so so that there are definitely things that aren't sort of like a story related, um, just because I I do need to find sort of like rest in in just the creative you know process and stuff. But um, but but yeah, as far as like as as far as hot ladies, I definitely <laughs> I definitely um, um, I I drew one character that that we're still kind of uh, uh, tinkering with and stuff like that. And one of the costumes, it, it's it's definitely um, kind of revealing. It's more in the um, aspect of um, if you know about um, M D Geist, it's the it's the female character where. Um, uh, like all those sort of 80s post-apocalyptic the guys would be suited and the women would be wearing like you know just just you know absolutely it's, barely it's nothing. a battle <laughs> armor leotard it's, it's it gives a, her all of the powers <laughs> but it has to be she has to show she needs to breathe you know what i mean she doesn't want to overheat yeah, there you go. yeah. so I, I i drew that as just a kind of it was kind of a um, an inspiration thing of like oh man like you know I, I grew up watching that and so when i drew it and then i was like actually i really like this character so i remember presenting it to to um michelle who's uh, co-writer and co-owner and, and moon Lair. and we we wanted to kind of come up with a story where, where we're like i know what people are going to think when they look at this character so there there goes the challenge of like yeah let's see if we can do something where people can be like you know what i thought this character was gonna i thought this story was gonna be something actually this is not bad i like this you know so the cowboy so. bebop guy said Every time he does a show without a big booby lady, it's very difficult <laughs> to get made. But when he says, oh, it's Space Dandy, and he goes to a restaurant called Boobies, mm. well, that show got funded for three seasons. So I'm not, true, yeah. I'm not here to tell you how to run your business. <laughs> no, I feel you. No. But I mean, we, uh, I mean, all the stories that we do, like we get super excited for it. And, we're, and, and, and we're, we're glad that people have like really good reactions just because we know that um, you know, new new studios, new IPs is very hard to kind of sell mm. to people. So, so we are glad that people, when they see it, they get it. They're like, "Oh my goodness!" Like, you know, this is this is really cool. So, so um, yeah, we're we're really happy that people are kind of accepting of of our <laughs> of our story. So, yeah. Uh, you mentioned if I miss a day, I'm like should have been it. I've seen yeah. those breakdowns of the Japanese artists yeah. where it's like yes. working, 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 lunch, yeah. working, 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 talk to my yeah. dad. Is your yeah. schedule similar to that? <laughs> um, I mean, definitely not as intense as that, but um, I, I draw every day. Like, you know, I'm, I'm also an art teacher as well. So I draw, you know, even even when I'm teaching, like I draw every day. Um you know, so it, it, it's it's definitely an everyday thing. I may I may take like Sunday off or 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 Saturday or when I have to like do things for um, family, uh, but it's an everyday thing and stuff. Um, but I do I, I do try to make some time for you know exercising because that's a that's a big that's a big issue for you know any any person who is working kind of stationary. That is that is something that's that's really important that that um, I think a lot of people are realizing right now and stuff. So. No. Um, your uh, the moon layer, uh, mm -hmm. a, a world upon its own as well. Somewhere yeah. between Transformers and He Man. Uh, yeah, in the oh, moon that's layer, good. I like that. In the moon layer <laughs> universe, uh, yeah. is it a larger robot that stands up and there's a full base underneath it? Is it yes. just like 
the Thundercats base. Uh, yeah. What is the lore around Moon Layer? So actually, I'm glad you mentioned that because this is actually King Guard. So you're right. Like it's a head and what you call it. And yeah. No, I'll tell you, no, I, I am, I am, uh, like, like I even have, um, um, in my, uh, what's it called? Um, on my, somewhere in my files, um, I actually have a play set design that I designed, you know, like, like, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to just debut it and stuff. Okay. I, I think. Mm -hmm. You do a yeah. tiny one. I think you do a Mighty Max as well. Do that head when it opens up this way. Yes. So there's two layers and there's a tiny dash of blue and he Actually, fights the guy bad. and like you do bad. three I, figures. Yeah, I totally forgot about the Mighty Max thing. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Because I We're products I, uh, of the 80s and 90s. We, yeah. we will tell you. We will pull yeah. like references out of Pirates of Dark Water and all that stuff. Sure, sure. Nice. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Mighty Max. Oh my goodness. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> So yeah. Uh you have all these ideas, you're executing mm -hmm. on these ideas, but you're mm -hmm. drawn in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. What is the next idea that's not boiling yet, but what is mm -hmm. the other world that you want to play with? Um we are actually leaning more towards into doing some shoujo. Um just because um Again, we, we we're just a big fan of, of storytelling. Like, and and you know, between between myself and you know, uh, my wife is a, a brilliant writer, and, and I think so. <laughs> um, you know, brilliant writer, and you know, she has some amazing ideas, and that's something that we was like, you know what, we have all of these these um, titles that that we're touching on, like martial arts and and sci-fi and adventure. Um, yeah, let's let's try some shoujo just because like I'm you know I'm a fan of, of you know certain shoujo um, properties as well and you know big big fan of of some of them so um, so definitely shoujo is kind of the next next one up and stuff um, so yeah well the strength of your team shows in the strength of your work it is written very well it is edited well there's great yes. pacing to these stories and. Uh, has left me lapping up and wanting more of these things. Yeah, I um, appreciate it. Uh, how can uh, how can our audience support you, and how how can they get these works from you? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, we're, so we're actually running a um, a Kickstarter campaign um, right now for the V series issue two. Um, and so we we are doing actually some really really cool like bundle deals on there. Um, um, you, you know we're 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 bundling a lot of our properties kind of together to 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 get some really fantastic deals. So um, if you're interested in checking out um, all of our work, all of that is going to be there um, on the Kickstarter, and also some some very um, some some very um, experimental rewards that, 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 that we are, are kind of dabbling into. Um, we're going to be getting into uh, trading cards. Um, um, those are going to be up there for rewards. Um, music CDs, which um, we, we have something called the Dynamic Manga that we are working on, where it's going to be fully voiced, um, uh, full intros and outros of our, all of our manga properties and stuff. So, so we got a lot of cool stuff going on. <laughs> I would love for you to do a card game around Go Go Ganzi. I don't think you've revealed oh, yeah. enough of the world for that to happen. Yeah. I think you would you would obviously yeah. be giving things away, but mm -hmm. if the sword system works the way I think it does, there's a great mm -hmm. building up of things that could actually go very well in some sort yeah. of card combat. Um, but yeah. that'll be for another day. Um, yeah. We've talked about the Kickstarter, talked about that. Mm -hmm. Where can people, where do you post online the most? Where can people see your doodles and things like that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, it's Moonlair underscore studios on Instagram. Um, mm -hmm. I post all of my work there. Um, you know, all of our updates. Um, we're really, really active on Instagram. So yeah, you guys can check us out there. Um, so yeah. Uh, the door is open. Anytime you would like to come back and talk about your next projects, we would love to have yeah. you. Um, it's so wonderful to see um, so many of these ideas that resonate with us as well reinterpreted yeah. in this new way, because I do feel that um, 
there is a market for it. And I think that uh, traditional anime is sticking to its own lane. It feels anime is the most, it, it, there's so much of it, but it feels so stuck in its own genre right now. If that mm -hmm. makes very sense. I, I feel like there's yeah. very few things that mm -hmm. make that pop out of it. It all feels within mm -hmm. world. So it's been such a mm -hmm. pleasure. Uh, yeah. to uh, see the things that you're working on. Oh, Taylor, any it. final questions? <laughs> no, I think you guys, as I was coming up with questions, Michael, you were already asking them. So I think okay. everything <laughs> is perfect. Um, the, the, the host co host synergy was perfect today. So I, I have nothing nice. more I want to ask uh, you. I just, uh, <laughs> I love your work and I love your little animatics that you put on Instagram, um, especially yeah, some of your it. ones that look 100% like Evangelion. And I'm a huge fan of yeah. that. So, oh, nice, um, nice. I think I think people yeah. definitely, uh, if you have that anime itch, check these guys out. Uh, before yeah. we let you go, uh, you. final yeah. question of the interview: Have you ever seen a UFO? Have I seen a UFO? No. no have you seen think. an unidentified <laughs> aerial phenomenon that you didn't classify as a craft, but yeah. intri intrigued you to keep looking at it? Um. Yes. 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 Where did you, I'm trying where to did you see where did you see these orbs? <laughs> I didn't see these orbs yet. <laughs> um, Michael will go through this on every person. So. We're not gonna no, spend no. that long on it. I just wanted no. to know about his unidentified yeah. aerial phenomenon he saw. Yeah, yeah. Um I, I, I think it was in it was in uh, when I was living in Florida. Um I saw something that was 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 quite strange. But I am the type of person that I, I've never I've never seen a ghost, I've never seen a chupacabra i've never seen demons and i'm glad for it so like i, <laughs> yeah. I looked at it and was like, uh, and then i was like i'm not looking for anything else i don't want to go out in the bushes and be like what's that what's that crash <laughs> like, <you know? laughs> uh, well that's usually how robot suits get onto children but that's not how your story started <laughs> yeah, exactly. but who knows uh thank you so much for uh taking time out of your busy drawing schedule uh please yeah. give uh, your best to your uh business partner and thank her for all that she done uh and yeah, thank you for absolutely. joining us here on the culture nerd yeah thank you so much for having me well, thank you for being here. And if you at home would like to support us, please head on over to the uh, patreon.com slash the cultured nerd. Uh, if you don't have any shekels to throw our way, uh, please, of course, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, all of those things helps feed the algorithm. Thank you for feeding it for us. Uh, question of the day. What was your favorite anime from the past? And what's a jewel of an idea that you would love to see explored? I'm Michael Santel. Uh, my uh, wonderful host and co-host was Taylor Murphy. Thank you Here so much for joining yep. us. And we'll see all you kids and cats next time.